Righto, tell you there champs. Now the new MacBook Pro 13, or will it be a 14, most likely a 13, is due to drop any minute. Now in this video, I'm gonna tell you pretty much what to expect, everything you need to know about this. That we do know, we have some benchmarks, and I'll show you a video where yes, with the parts that's gonna be in these MacBook Pro 13s, you will be able to, with an eGPU, beat a desktop in rendering in certain situations. Yes, that is true. It is game changing in that way. Now I did release a video, what was it last week? Because they had some sort of APU sort of hidden in the latest Mac OS beta that maybe, just maybe they might have AMD CPUs in the new MacBook Pros. But yeah, as much as I wish that was true. Sadly, I don't think it is true. Maybe that's still an ongoing thing. Maybe it was just the red herring or something to give Intel a kick up the backside, which they, you know, they really need. But in any case, we've seen some benchmarks from Mac products with these Ice Lake CPUs in them. So pretty sure 90 something percent that this is what they're going to go with here. So thanks again to RO Game. But as you can see here, the 220 MacBook Pro 13 comes with two terabyte SSD, 32 gigs of RAM. And that's one thing too. You can go up to 32 gigs RAM now because you're going to have Ice Lake CPUs. So that's one change you're going to get with these MacBook Pros. So this is not your normal Ice Lake CPU. This is a 28 watt version. So it's not the normal 15 to 25 watt part that you get in say XPS 13 or you can actually get in say the MacBook Pro as well or any other sort of Ultrabook using the current 15 watt Ice Lake CPUs. This is a 28 watt version. Now they probably will have two MacBook Pros. One will use the 15 watt, one will use the 28 watt or maybe they're just going all 28 watt. So this CPU doesn't exist at the moment. You cannot find it in the Intel Arc. It's a new one, so it's going to have more power. Now it is four cores, eight threads, and the model number is 1068NG7. So it's a 28 variant of the Ice Lake CPUs. If you've ever wondered why the current MacBook Pro 13s are stuck on eighth generation CPUs, because they haven't updated this 28 watt part, which is the one Apple uses. And as far as I know, no one else uses them. So these should be faster than all the 15 to 25 watt Ice Lake CPUs, even though you'll see in the benchmarks, which we'll get up here. You can see in the benchmarks, it's showing 30, but I'll show you a video in a sec where I use an Ice Lake CPU and an XPS 13 2-in-1, and I connect an eGPU to it, and it actually renders hardware encoding faster than a desktop. We're talking 16 core Threadripper, Radeon 7, we're talking 9900K, overclocked to 5 gigahertz, RTX 2080 Ti, and any other laptop, it beat it in rendering in my test render in Premiere Pros. And that's because it has Iris Plus graphics. Now, the significance of Iris Plus graphics is there's two times HEVC and H.264 encoding decoding. Okay, so it's faster. And you might be thinking, well, it would have been good to go with eight cores with AMD. But you've got to remember, Intel still have the instruction set advantage. Like, you know, they got AVX 512, Thunderbolt 3 built in. Okay, so you're not going to need a discrete Thunderbolt 3 controller on these new MacBook Pros. So they should run cooler. And when you plug in an external display, you should not hear the fan noise kick in. So it's going to be much better in that regard. Also, Wi-Fi 6 built in. Okay, so they better have Wi-Fi 6. They should have Wi-Fi 6. And when it comes to displays, I'm not expecting mini LED at this moment, but maybe later on in the year for both the 16 and the 13 or 14, the keyboard will be changed. It'll have the magic keyboard. And expect just on the CPU front, you know, nearly 20% gains on CPU alone, even though it's still a quad core. But not only that, on the graphics department, up to 50% gain in graphics. Even though, again, as I said here, it's showing like 29, 30% uplift in the graphics. I've done testing with games, and yeah, it's nearly double the performance of just the normal Intel HD. So there are real gains with this Iris Plus graphics. Now, there are Tiger Lake CPUs coming out at the end of the year. Will they make a 28 watt version? straight away i doubt it so i think you're going to be stuck with this processor i don't think they'll upgrade to tiger lake at the end of the year because the 28 watt part compared to the 15 watt part doesn't get upgraded as quick but hopefully it does and at the end of the year you'll have a tiger lake option which will be another 20 25 percent gain in the gpu department so now seriously 
this 13 inch MacBook Pro or 14 inch maybe is going to be killer. So the upgrade you're going to get, the keyboard upgrade, you're going to get up to 32 gigs RAM. You're going to get much better graphics performance, a good lift in the CPU performance, Thunderbolt 3 built in, Wi-Fi 6 built in, no discrete controllers for that Thunderbolt. Display, I don't expect too much to be different with the displays. Maybe a slimming of the bezels, but I expect it to be the, you know, the LED 500 nit sort of panel. Micro LED is not ready yet. I'd love to be surprised on this department, but I don't think it is ready yet. So this is going to be quite a big upgrade and it's well worth waiting. Do not buy a Mac now. Wait for these. Hopefully, please have 16 gigs standard and have bigger sizes of your SSDs. MacBook Pro is coming out with 128 gig storage. Please, no, no, no. 256 should be the minimum. And I think the next spec model up should have the i7 and it should have 16 gigs, hopefully, and at least 512 or maybe, please, one terabyte, considering that the 16-inch MacBook Pro comes with one terabyte as well. So anyway, this thing's going to be amazing. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Tally ho.